गुड मॉर्निंग दिस इज अवर ट्वेंटी सेकेंड लेक्चर ऑफ द कोर्स सो वी डिड कंप्लीट आवर डिस्कशन ऑन द सॉक वेब्स एज वेल एज वी हैव ऑल्सो डिस्कस द प्रिंटल मेयर एक्सपेंशन वेब्स ओके सो नाउ यू विल बी फाइंडिंग दैट वेन वी आर हैविंग द प्रैक्टिकल सिचुएशन इन केस ऑफ प्रैक्टिकल सिचुएशन इन सम पोर्शन ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्ट देयर मे बी फॉर्मेशन ऑफ Uh, sock waves and in certain portion there may be formation of the expansion waves okay so we may have situations where jointly both the sock as well as the expansion waves are occurring okay and uh, particularly taking the interest in the field of aerodynamics actually we will be finding that in aerodynamics two things are very very important one thing is drag force and another is lift force okay because our majority of the attempts are actually uh to overcome the drag and to generate sufficient lift force okay so we will try to relate that how these shock waves and expansion waves actually affects our drag and lift forces okay so to do this uh, what we do we consider one general theory which is called as shock expansion theory okay so to understand uh, uh, shock expansion theory let's try to consider first a situation where i have a symmetric diamond shaped wedge so say this is a wedge structure i am having okay so this is symmetric in both the sides and it is diamond shaped so say this angle over here if it is epsilon this angle is also epsilon and over here also angle is epsilon and epsilon okay and let's consider the dimension of this each side is nothing but l and say in between whatever this thickness of the structure is there that is say t okay so this is nothing but a uh, wedge geometry but this wedge geometry is actually diamond shaped wedge okay because uh, usually when we were considering the wedge structure so just behind the wedge we were just considering a line only okay but over here it is having just equal uh, symmetrical situation in the downstream also and i am having actually a complete diamond shaped wedge over here okay so if you see this diamond shaped wedge uh, ultimately what i can do i can say that if flow is starting at this point so flow will be coming something like this this will be my free stream direction so say it is denoted by 1 and say my mach number over here is m1 okay so if i have a supersonic situation in case of a supersonic situation uh, we are finding over here what is happening flow is actually finding a sharp concave corner over here in both the directions so ultimately i will see that at this point i will be having one shock wave oblique shock wave and then similarly in the downward direction also i will be having one oblique shock wave <coughs> fine so this geometry is nothing but symmetric diamond shaped wedge okay so one shock wave is there another shock wave is like this and as angles are same so both the angles are epsilon so this above angle and bottom angle both will be the same okay now after this what will be happening so you can see that if a flow streamline is coming it will interact with the shock wave and in the downstream of the shock wave it will change its angle and it will deflect through an angle of epsilon fine now at this point if you see what is happening at this particular point if you see nothing but flow was going like this and then all of a sudden it has experienced a convex corner so here we will be having smooth transition of the flow and this smooth transition will be actually due to the presence of an expansion fan okay so here i will be finding that a number of expansion waves are there and these expansion waves will lead to smooth transition of the flow to new situation 
fine okay and here if you see this was the direction and now this is the direction so how much is this angle with reference to horizontal one was epsilon and this bottom is also epsilon so this complete angle between these two lines will become nothing but 2 epsilon okay so here we will be finding that at this point my streamline is actually changing through an angle of 2 epsilon over here okay and after this point if you see what is happening all of a sudden once again you are having some corner over here so after this corner what will be happening actually the way flow is coming from this side in the similar way flow will also come from this side okay and these will try to once again create over here nothing but a converging situation so in order to uh, due to this converging situation what i will be finding once again here also i will be having one oblique soft wave because this flow and this flow when these are coming together ultimately this is trying to create some converging situation over here okay and so say this is the situation and then after that my streamlines will try to become say horizontal over here okay now <clears throat> if you see just behind the soft wave this is our reason so if i start from free stream and then i face or my flow faces the oblique soft waves then on the downstream of the oblique soft wave i will be having actually different properties okay so say this is my region number 2 where properties will be different now this this wave and these waves are symmetrical so here also properties i can designate with state number 2 is this one clear now after 2 what is happening then i have the presence of an expansion fan so when i have the presence of an expansion fan though each of this wave is a weak mac wave but i am having infinite number of waves which are leading to finite deflection of the flow so as flow is undergoing through finite deflection through the expansion fan here also i will be having finite change in the properties okay so this point number 3 will be having different properties is this one clear now we know that uh, our main interest is actually we want to estimate that how much force this particular flow is actually applying on our structure okay so we are interested in calculating the drag and lift forces and another important point is that considering the compressible flow situation so i have already told you so in this subject whatever we will be referring to everywhere we will consider the inviscid situation okay so we know that this particular flow will lead to certain forces on the object and this forces will act on the object through its surface okay so at the surface we will be having presence of surface forces so surface forces are pressure and shear stress as we are considering the inviscid flow situation so my shear stress will be zero okay so for inviscid flow situation because we have taken the assumption that our situation is inviscid so for compressible flow analysis we are taking the assumption that our situation is inviscid so if we have inviscid situation so only surface force we will be having actually pressure so it means that if i have to calculate the lift and drag forces the aerodynamic forces on this object what i have to do i have to actually determine the pressure distribution okay so let me attempt to plot the pressure distribution so this is my object this should be symmetric actually okay so now i know that this is my point number 1 here pressure is p1 say this is my point number 2 here pressure will be p2 this is my point number 3 where pressure will be p3 okay now if you see p1 will be nothing but free stream pressure and here i am experiencing a shock wave so when shock wave is present that will try to increase the pressure so here 
P2 pressure say this is my P2 pressure over here. Pressure is a compressive force, so it will be always into the object. So this is say of P2 magnitude over here. Okay. Then after this point, what I have over here? I have the expansion fan present, and we know that for expansion fan, P2 by P1 is less than one. So over here it means P3 by P2 will be less than 1. Okay. So it means that my this pressure will be having lesser magnitude in comparison to the so this will be my pressure profile P3. Okay. And now due to the symmetric situation, whatever pressure I am having in the upper phase, similar will be the pressure profile in this bottom portion also. So, here I will be having pressure P2, here I will be having pressure P3. Okay, And this thickness over here is say T and this angle is epsilon and this length over here is say L for each. Okay, Is it clear? Now, if we have to estimate the drag and lift forces, then we know that what is drag force? drag force is nearly equal to x component of minus p into ds okay and lift force will be y component of minus integral p ds sorry ds Fine. So, now if you see this particular pressure is oriented in such a way so that if you take its y component, what will be happening? In y component, this pressure and this pressure will balance and this pressure and this pressure will balance. Okay. So, ultimately if you see for this situation my lift force is becoming equal to 0. Fine. Because these pressures are oriented such that the pressure on opposite faces is actually cancelling each other. Okay? So, in y direction I will be getting actually 0 force and in x direction if you see this is the pressure and say this will be your area vector okay? and this area vector is having how much inclination? This inclination is epsilon. So, its horizontal uh, vertical component will be A cos epsilon and horizontal component will be A sin epsilon. Okay. And if I talk about the surface area, so I am considering a two dimensional flow situation. So, it means this wedge is of infinite thickness in transverse direction it is going to infinity. Is this point clear? So, if I go normal to the uh, page, so normal to the page it is going up to infinity. That is why that then only it will be able to create a two dimensional situation. Okay. So, for two dimensional flow situation I will be having area equal to say L into 1. So, if I in depth direction because it is extending keep on extending. Okay, So, I can just if I consider unit T, I can write A is equal to L. Okay, So, area over here will be becoming equal to L because third dimension is giving the feeling that it is extending up to infinity. So, whatever the analysis is, uh, is applicable at this cross section, same will be applicable throughout the entire depth of that particular airfoil structure. Okay, So, that is the reason that A I am actually approximating with L. Okay. Now, uh, if I take this uh, drag force, so drag force will become from here minus of or ultimately if you see uh, this will become P times P2 times L in x direction what was the L in place of A I am writing L. So, L sin epsilon. 
so this is for one face okay i am having one bottom face also so contribution will come from this pressure also because l is for single one then l is for this one also okay here also pressure is trying to uh, create a force in x direction so it means that it has become two times p2 into l sin epsilon okay so now if you see the direction of p2 pressure is like this it is in the direction of say a component is in positive x direction p3 pressures x component is in negative direction so these pressures in x direction actually will create opposite effect okay so for this section i can write minus 2 p3 into l sin epsilon is this one clear so now from here d will be equal to say 2 times p2 minus p3 into l sin epsilon now if you go back and if you try to write from the geometry so you will get sin epsilon will be equal to perpendicular so perpendicular over here is t by 2 divided by hypotenuse is l okay so l you can write as t by 2 sin epsilon okay so this will become 2 times p2 minus p3 into t by 2 epsilon into sin epsilon so this will cancel out and ultimately we will get drag force is equal to 2 times of p2 minus p3 into sorry 2 is also getting cancelled here p2 minus p3 into t okay is this point clear so now if you observe the situation here one thing we have assumed what we assumed we assumed that our situation is supersonic m1 is greater than 1 because if i have supersonic flow situation then only my oblique wave will uh, oblique shock wave will form okay if i don't have the supersonic situation if i consider a subsonic situation in case of subsonic situation what will happen if mach number is less than 1 there will not be any shock formation of any shock wave so change on pressure will be very very small okay so pressure at this phase and this phase will be almost the same okay so if i take so this particular situation is coming when i have assumed that upstream mach number is greater than 1 that is my situation is supersonic if i consider a subsonic situation if i say my mach number is less than 1 upstream mach number is less than 1 it means i have a subsonic situation if i have subsonic situation there will not be formation of any shock wave so i have no shock wave over there if there is no shock wave then changes in pressure will not be significant and that too when i am considering that i have in visit situation for in visit situation i will be finding that pressure at point 2 will be equal to pressure at point 3 okay so if pressure at point 2 equal to pressure at point 3 then it means that for subsonic situation if i consider in visit flow then for a two dimensional flow over a wedge i am getting drag force is equal to zero is this point clear when i have subsonic situation then i don't have any shock wave and that too along with the subsonic if i am invoking the assumption of inviscid flow also then ultimately i am finding that my drag force is becoming equal to zero so this type of situation is called as this is famously known as d lambert's paradox okay this is known as d lambert's paradox how this paradox is resolved when we consider the viscous effect then we say that uh, there is formation of a boundary layer over the object and this leads to nothing but force due to the shear stress okay due to the viscous forces drag force will be resulting due to the viscous forces that makes actually finite drag force even for subsonic flow situation also
okay so if you are having subsonic flow situation then considering that you are having inviscid flow situation our drag force becomes zero which is not true in reality in reality if you are having an object and flow is happening over the object whether it is supersonic or subsonic even in case of subsonic flow also you will be finding there will be some amount of drag force okay but if we assume the inviscid situation then ultimately for subsonic flow two dimensional flow that drag force will uh, becomes zero as it becomes zero this particular uh, situation is called as d lambert's paradox and this paradox is avoided for subsonic flow situations when viscous forces are actually considered okay one important point is that in case of supersonic flow even if i consider the even if i consider the inviscid situation still i am getting some amount of drag force over here okay so as we know that drag force can be divided into two parts one is drag due to the pressure which is called as form drag and another is drag due to the drag due to the viscous forces okay so which is called as viscous drag or sometimes it is also known as skin friction drag okay so what i am trying to say over here even if i neglect the skin friction drag if i only consider the contribution of the drag force due to in visit flow situation due to pressure forces then also i am getting a finite value of drag over here for uh for in visit supersonic flow situation okay and for supersonic flow situation the main origin of this drag is nothing but our presence of the shock waves or expansion waves because these are modifying the properties shock waves and expansion waves this is the reason that whatever this da drag force we are getting for in visit flow situation uh for uh, the two dimensional wedge structure this is also known as wave drag okay so ultimately the origin of this drag force is nothing but the origin of this drag force is nothing but the waves okay so that is the reason we call this as wave drag also is this point clear now if you see in this particular situation what we have done our angle of attack was zero so this wedge was actually facing the flow with its tip now if i take a thin flat plate say i have a thin pl flat plate and so thickness is very very small that is the reason i am calling it as thin plate flat plate if thin flat plate is making an angle angle of attack say this angle of attack is alpha alpha is the angle of attack with the flow now what will happen <clears throat> if you see flow is coming like this horizontally and in bottom portion of the plate what will happen bottom portion of the plate i will find <clears throat> ultimately a shock wave over here okay because it is becoming a corner so here i will be having formation of a shock wave okay and what what will happen over there <clears throat> here if you see you are getting an expansion corner okay so here you will be having presence of multiple shock waves okay so in this situation if you try to find out the pressure distribution you will be finding that in this direction pressure will be something like this below the shock wave or i can say behind the shock wave <clears throat> okay and here pressure will be so when you are having a situation that object is coming at certain angle of attack 
then what is happening it is generating a lift force on the object so now if you see you will be having both x component as well as the y component okay so when you are having in this this is a straight object but when straight object is coming at certain angle of attack then you will be finding formation of both lift as well as the drag forces okay ultimately if you see so till now whenever i have observed this thin flat plate i considered only the flow which is <coughs> in the leading edge now what will happen at the trailing edge so if we see trailing edge also so at the trailing edge we will be finding that this is my plate here i have formation of one shock wave okay and here i have formation of the expansion waves what will happen over here because this flow will also come like this so here i will be having formation of a shock wave and here i will be having formation of an expansion fan okay so ultimately if you consider this type of situation you will be finding a streamline which is coming like this first it is smoothly bending then becoming like this and then at this point it is once again when we are having a shock wave streamline has to bend towards the shock wave so it will be bending something like this and ultimately it is leaving at certain angle phi okay so here also if you see first flow will bend towards then smoothly smoothly it will bend and then follow this direction okay so an interesting finding is that if you are having a thin flat plate which is at certain angle of attack alpha then you will be finding that whatever the flow direction you are having in the free stream that flow direction is not there in the behind the free stream okay so behind the free stream you are finding that it is moving at certain angle this is also one paradox why the point is that this flow is actually applying certain lift force on the object so this lift force is acting on the object in which direction upward direction okay now object should apply based on the newton's third law of motion object should apply equivalent uh, amount of force but in opposite direction on the flow so if force is acting on the object in opposite direction then this flow should move in downward direction but ultimately if i consider a pure inviscid situation i am finding that flow is slightly moving in upward direction so this is one sort of paradox over here because it is not satisfying the newton's third law of motion which is the basic law of mechanics okay so now how to adjust this situation okay how to explain this situation so at the moment whenever we have drawn this aerofoil uh, whenever we have drawn the shock and expansion waves these shock and expansion waves we have drawn actually in very close to the aerofoil however these waves will be extending in our portion far away from the aerofoil also so if i draw the situation when my aerofoil is so small okay and i have over this formation of large waves so i can say that one expansion one oblique shock wave is forming like this. however it is expanding something like this then here also i have one more shock wave so it is starting like this but then ultimately it is extending something like this okay it is becoming curved at far away from the object so now uh, if you see expansion fan so that will be something like this so at some point it is meeting actually the shock wave okay so what is basically happening if i have a streamline so a streamline i can say that locally it might have some angle slightly away from the flow however a streamline which is say coming through this portion that will be having major flow in 
downward direction so overall effect is to have complete flow in majority of the flow in downward direction which is actually satisfying our newton's third law of motion so this paradox is actually we can see that if we just observe only the very localized flow situation in the trailing edge then we will be finding that my streamline is actually slightly moving at angle slightly above the horizontal okay so say it is 1 or 2 degrees but it is oriented slightly in the upward direction okay so ultimately this creates a paradox that if my lift force is being generated on the object in upward direction then object should give a force in the downward direction okay so ultimately my flow should move in the downward direction but localized if we see flow is having slightly upward angle however if we consider the uh, the expansion of the extension of the shock and expansion waves over the complete uh, aerofoil uh, considering the large domain till the free stream situation is reached there we will be finding in larger portion of the uh, this uh, wave structures flow will be in downward direction and very localized portion i will be having where flow is in upward direction okay moreover whatever the streamline structure i am drawing over here this is considering that we are having in visit situation if we are having viscous forces also coming into picture which comes in reality we will be having in this portion over here one important phenomenon which is called as flow okay because of the boundary layer effects and some uh, pressure changes we will be having flow separation and once flow separation is coming into picture our situation will become more complicated okay so for example presently whenever we are not considering flow separation behind the shock wave what will be downstream pressure i can easily predict okay by using the shock wave relations i am considering the assumption that i don't have viscous forces i don't have any flow separation so flow is actually coming with the help of proper streamlines and then bending at certain angle there is no recirculation of the flow it is purely one dimensional flow so by just taking the help of uh, shock wave relations i can predict the value of pressure but ultimately if i include the viscous forces into consideration then this situation will become more complicated and i will be having flow separation etc over here and this type of complicated situation if we have to analyze then ultimately we have to go for the numerical solution okay so then we have to go for numerical solution there analytical solution will not be possible is this one clear now let's also try to see a situation so yesterday when we talked about the expansion waves okay uh, we saw that if i have number of expansion waves then i am actually changing the flow through some finite angle theta sorry finite angle theta but ultimately if i have to determine what will be the value of theta max maximum deflection how much is possible in case of shock expansion flow in case of sorry in case of parental expansion fan okay so for that let's consider that i have flow which is moving at mach number equal to 1 okay so m1 my upstream mach number is one now yesterday if you recall i have defined uh, v of m equal to square root of gamma plus 1 by gamma minus 1 tan inverse of square root of gamma minus 1 by gamma plus 1 m square minus 1 okay minus of tan inverse and this equation is obtained once we have considered that our initial reference state is ultimately this was the integration and this i have to integrate from m1 to m2 okay so this will be m2 of this minus same function at 
m1 but ultimately i considered that this function i can just obtain at any m by considering that corresponding to m1 equal to 1 my v of m1 is 0 okay so now if my upstream Mach number itself is becoming equal to 1 and say I have over here the formation of an expansion fan. Okay. So, after this expansion fan say my Mach number is becoming m. So, corresponding to this Mach number m what will be my angle? That is what we are trying to see that how much maximum angle can have. So, we know that in the downstream of the expansion fan what happens basically in the downstream of the expansion fan value of Mach number increases m1 will be greater than m will be greater than m1 ok. So now what is the maximum limit for increase of this Mach number on the downstream of expansion fan. The maximum limit for this increase is infinity. So at max it can reach to a very high value which is approaching to infinity. So, if I substitute over here tan inverse of infinity, so tan 90 becomes infinity. So, ultimately I can say that this corresponding to V of m approaching to infinity, I will get under root gamma plus 1 by gamma minus 1 into 90 degree minus 90 degree because this m I am approaching to infinity. Okay. So, this is becoming square root of gamma plus 1 by gamma minus 1 minus 1 times 90. Okay. If you calculate this value, it will comes out to be 130.45 degree. Okay. So, this value is coming out to be 130.45 degree. So, it means that if I have presence of expansion fan over here such that my downstream Mach number which is starting at sonic situation and ultimately it is becoming infinity then ultimately my deflection angle will be how much? So, this angle over here will be 130.45 degrees. So, I can say that this is my theta max. Okay. So, when my uh, starting with sonic point and then if I reaching my m approaching to infinity then at max it has to move through an angle of 130.45 degrees. Sorry. So, angle when we measure this angle comes with the direction of the flow. So, direction of the flow is horizontal. I made a mistake over here. Let me correct it. always when we measure the angle, angle has to be measured with direction of the flow. So, direction of the flow is this. So, angle will be 130.45. This is the deflection angle. Okay. So, now when I am considering this maximum angle of deflection corresponding to this my m2 is becoming infinity. We have seen the relations for p2 by p1. How much was it? 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m1 square by and this whole power gamma by gamma minus 1. Okay. So, this is what we have actually obtained. Now, if you consider your m2 is infinity, so it means your p2 by p1 is 0. So, when the flow is deflecting through an angle of 130.45 degrees corresponding to that similarly T2 by T1 will also be 0. So, your over here you have to reach a situation of absolute vacuum. Then only you will be having 0 pressure and 0 temperature. Okay. But this situation is actually not practically feasible. So, it means that in practical cases, whatever the maximum deflection we will be finding for our expansion flow, that will be always less than 130.45 degrees. Because when I am considering the highest uh, 
deflection of 130.45 degree corresponding to it though my Mach number is approaching to infinity but ultimately I am getting a situation that pressure and temperature has to become zero and that will be only possible if we have absolute vacuum. So, this is something which is not practically possible. So, it means another important point will be happening uh, when you will be calculating the deflection angle then deflection angle we have seen that theta is V of M2 minus V of M1. So, till now what we have done we considered that I have a sonic situation. So, if I have a sonic situation then V of M1 was becoming nothing but equal to 0. But when I will be calculating this for any value other than M1 equal to 1 then this will be a finite number then this will also be result in decrease in value of theta. Okay. So, maximum value of theta will be possible corresponding to upstream Mach number of 1. If I have upstream Mach number less than 1, greater than 1 I cannot consider because if I consider greater than 1 then ultimately there will be, sorry, okay, no, no, this is expansion fan, so there will be expansion wave only. But so, if I consider any Mach number which is other than 1, then I will be having decrease in value of theta. Okay. So, theta max will be possible corresponding to upstream Mach number of 1 and another important point is the theta max of 130.45 degrees is not practically possible. Okay. So, practically value of theta will be less than this value. Okay. Is this one clear? Now, let us try to see a, a numerical problem based on this. So, if I consider that I have a very thin flat plate. This flat plate is of infinitely small thickness. So, that is why I am trying to draw in such a way so that it is not having any thickness over here. Okay. And say this flat plate is having angle alpha which is equal to 5 degrees. So, this is our angle of attack over here. Okay. So, uh, I know that here I will be having formation of a shock wave and here I will be having formation of an expansion fan. Okay. And pressure already I have plotted that say here my pressure will be higher and here pressure will be low. Okay. Now, I have seen say this is my point number 1, here Mach number is 2.6, this situation is designated by 2, here pressure is P2, this is pressure P3 and this is designated by 0.3. Okay. And it was asked to calculate in the question that what is the coefficient of drag and coefficient of lift for this situation. Okay. So, uh, first thing is that my M1 is given. So, let us first analyze the flow situ transition from point 1 to point 2. So, point 1 to 2 I have nothing but an expansion fan. So, for expansion fan if I have to proceed as per the algorithm first step is I have to calculate V of M1. Okay. So, V of M1 if I calculate I can calculate using this formula also what I have written in the previous slide or I can refer to table as well. Okay. So, if I calculate V of M1 that comes out to be 41.41 degrees. Okay. So, if I have V of M1 then second step is I have to calculate theta which is equal to V of M2 minus V of M1 and over here if you see initially flow was coming horizontal then it has bent and become parallel to this. So, if you see the flow deflection angle is how much? Theta is equal to alpha over here and that is equal to 5 degrees. So, from here I can say that V of M2 will be equal to theta plus V of M1 and that comes out to be 46.41 degrees. Is this point clear? Now, if I have V of M2, then 
I can substitute this V of M2 in this previous equation and I can calculate the value of M2. Okay. So, corresponding this V of M2, I can from the table, I can calculate the value of M2 either from the table or by substituting into the previous relation. So, if I calculate the value of M2, uh, that comes out to be 2.85. Okay. So, M2 is coming out to be 2.85. If M2 is 2.85, then my P2 by P1, which is equal to 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2, M1 square, 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 into M2 square whole power gamma by gamma minus 1. If you calculate this value, it comes out to be 0 0.681, because now you have the value of M2. Up to this point, is it clear? So, I have calculated what should be the value of P2 over here. Okay. Now, my aim is to calculate the value of P3. Then only I will be able to calculate the lift and drag forces. Okay. So, to calculate uh, P3, this is my flow deflection. How much is flow deflection over here? So, this is how flow is coming and then it is bending like this. So, flow deflection is once again equal to alpha for this. So, for situation 1 to 3, my theta is equal to 5 degrees and m1 is equal to 2.6 and this is nothing but a shock wave over here. Okay? So, this is a shock wave. So, if this is a shock wave, I have to refer to theta beta m diagram from theta beta m diagram corresponding to m1 of this and theta of this, if I consider a weak shock wave, then I will be finding value of beta equal to 26.5 degrees. Okay. If I have value of beta, then my mn1 will become m1 into sin beta and this comes out to be 1.16. Is this point clear? Now, for an oblique shock wave, if I have to calculate downstream pressure, then I can write P3 by P1 is equal to 1 plus 2 gamma by gamma plus 1 times m n1 square minus of 1, which is equal to 1.403. So, ratio of P3 by P1 I have calculated. Okay. Now, if say the length of this aerofoil is say C, so span of this is, so this pla plate is C. Okay. If C is the length and once again considering the two dimensional situation, I will do calculations for unit depth. So, if I consider unit depth, then it will be coming C into 1. Okay. So, area will be C into 1. Now, if you see uh, this is having angle of inclination alpha over here. So, the projection of this area in vertical direction will be, this projection will be C cos alpha and this projection of area in this direction, x direction projected area will be C sin alpha. Okay. What, what is the force in x direction? projected area multiplied by pressure difference and force in y direction is projected area in y direction multiplied with pressure difference. So, from here I can say that I can say that lift force per unit width. So, I am writing L dash as lift force per unit width because in the uh, this one width direction we are taking it unity then only I am writing area is equal to C. So, lift force per unit width will become pressure difference is P3 minus P2 and area is C cos alpha, projected area in vertical direction. Okay. So, that is C cos alpha. So, this is my lift force and then drag force if I calculate that will be P3 minus P2 into C sin alpha. 
now ultimately it is asked in the question to calculate the drag coefficient and lift coefficient so we know that fd can also be represented in terms of dynamic pressure as half rho v square and so cd times half rho v square and fl can also be written in terms of cl times half rho v square do you know this point so half rho v square is called as dynamic pressure so if i multiply dynamic pressure with coefficient of drag then i get nothing but the drag force and if i multiply it with lift coefficient then i get the lift force okay so now <clears throat> let's first calculate this uh, dynamic free stream dynamic pressure so this when we do we do write rho infinity and v infinity so this is based on the free stream parameter so if i calculate free stream dynamic pressure then i will get half of rho infinity into v infinity square okay now let me divide and multiply this term by gamma p infinity and gamma p infinity so what i am doing gamma p infinity multiply gamma p infinity divide so now this gamma p infinity by rho infinity will become speed of sound so this will become half of gamma p infinity into v infinity by a infinity will become mat number at infinity square now conditions at infinity are denoted by over here with value 1 so this free stream dynamic pressure i can write as gamma by 2 in place of p infinity i can write p1 in place of m infinity i can write m1 square okay so it means that if i have to calculate the drag coefficient and lift coefficient i can write it in the form of l dash by q infinity q infinity is dynamic pressure okay so one mistake here i have to multiply with area also okay so this is the mistake i have done because uh, this is pressure half rho v infinity square is pressure cd is dimensionless quantity so it has to multiply with area then only it will become equal to force okay so <clears throat> from here i can write that from here i can write that cl will be equal to l dash by q infinity into c area is c into 1 okay so q infinity into c so if you do this you will get 2 by gamma m1 square and p1 i have taken inside so it will become p3 by p1 minus p2 by p1 into cos alpha okay if you do substitute the values p3 by p1 we have calculated P2 by P1 we have calculated M1 we know gamma we know and cos alpha we know so ultimately I will get the value of Cl as 0.152. <coughs> Similarly, if I calculate drag coefficient, that will be d dash by q infinity into c. It will become 2 by gamma M1 square into P3 by P1 minus P2 by P1 and ultimately it will come as sine. alpha over here okay so this comes out to be 0.0133 one important physical inference you can make over here in both the expressions what we have done we have written the same value of free stream dynamic pressure okay and that we have multiplied with coefficient now you can see in this situation the projected area in vertical direction is more in comparison to projected area in horizontal direction so this is the reason that in this situation i will be having more lift force in comparison to more drag force so physically we are inferring this situation and mathematically you can see by adhering to this physical situation our coefficients has also come with the same proportion so coefficient of lift is more in comparison to coefficient of drag now if you change the value of alpha if you keep on increasing the angle of attack 
increasing the angle of attack will increase the value of sin alpha and decrease the value of so it means drag component will keep on increasing at higher angles of attack and lift component will keep on decreasing okay and at very low angle of attack also what will happen when your angle of attack is zero then also lift force will become zero and sorry yeah drag force will be equal to zero so ultimately it will be generating only the lift force so this drag will become zero considering inviscid flow situation okay but if you have supersonic flow situation then ultimately there has to be wave wave drag okay but for wave, wave drag to occur your plate should have finite thickness if thickness is infinite in x direction then it will not come into picture okay is this point clear so uh, i will now stop at this point and then uh, we will discuss further in the next